Hello everybody. This is Shalom from Zimbabwe and today I am going to be talking about Africa. So, first question, what does Africa look like? Hmm. Okay, okay, I'm going to attempt to answer this, you know, as, as accurately as I can. Uh, first of all, I cannot speak on behalf of the whole of Africa because Africa is like a huge continent. It's like this huge place with 54 different countries. Yo, have you seen like the, the, the African continent or the globe? It's huge. Like it's, it's really huge. Africa is a really big place. But I can speak, you know, in my experiences of the places that I have been to. Like I have lived most of my life in Zimbabwe, in South Africa. Um, and I, I can say that, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, Zimbabwe and South Africa, you know, I can, I can speak more accurately. But when it comes to other places in Africa, I honestly do not know. I don't know. So or what does Zimbabwe really look like? Okay, Zimbabwe is a place which is like rich in nature. It has a lot of natural resources, like we are talking minerals, we are talking about like wildlife, we are talking about these natural beautiful places like the Victoria Falls. Basically the Victoria Falls is like the largest waterfall in the world. It's like this really beautiful place. I've been there once. It's it's incredible. It's it's really it's really beautiful. We have the Matopos Hills, we have places like the Chinoy Caves, we have um, Wange National Park, we have, um, uh, oh my god, I cannot think of all of them, uh, we have mana, mana pools, we have, uh, what, what else, and then we have historical places like the Great Zimbabwe, which is like a historical monument, like this historical building that was built like mm, about like uh, a few hundred years ago by our ancestors it's 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 spectacular it's 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 just beautiful and we have uh, what else do we have when it comes to residential areas you know areas where you find like a lot of people we have um, okay basically when it comes to cities, not just in Zimbabwe, but I've noticed this in South Africa as well. Like we have like big cities, right? There's big cities like capital cities like Harare, you know, Blawayo in, in South Africa. They have Johannesburg, Pretoria and Cape Town, Durban and so on. And then we have like smaller, smaller towns. Um, the smaller towns in, in, in Zimbabwe is like the Chinois and stuff like that and then we have like from smaller towns we have like growth points and these growth points are not as big as like the towns or the cities or like as westernized this is a place where like you know the traditional African like village life and the modern you know like the modern African life you know it's like the where they meet like this growth point like in Zimbabwe we have those growth point and then there is the village so like in the village like that is where you find like traditional things that are traditionally Africans you find mud huts you find um, you find like this is where people farmers most farmers live like you find farming agriculture and you find um you know just like things that are most things that are traditionally african you find them in the african villages and then like in the african big cities like they are you know like high-rise buildings and 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 stuff like that and then in the towns like you know like smaller buildings like houses commercial housing and just just like uh, some of the houses that i have seen here in china right so yeah it's it's not when you search on the internet like you find that like is when you search like what is africa really like you just see the mud huts you just see them you know like dirty places it couldn't be further from the truth yes those things exist there are places like that they are really places like that but it's not always like that it's not actually it's not even what the, the 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 majority of the you know the country looks like it's it's just like a, a certain area a certain percentage like a certain 
percentage of the country um okay let's go to the next question what language do africans speak okay so again <laughs> uh africans do not have like one language africans actually have like the most like the most number of languages like in you know like in one continent like we have the most cultural diversity in africa um africa has like about 2000 2000 if i'm not mistaken more than 2000 different spoken languages and you know and these are different ethnic groups or you know tribes as they call them uh these like different ethnic groups they have their own language they have their own culture they have their own cuisines their their own like cultural dressing so like it's it's it differs like from let's say in my country like we have like in my country the languages are not that many like we have like five or so yeah like we have shona english the official language is shona english ndebele we have tsonga we have like i'm forgetting most of, i speak shona and english and a little bit of ndebele uh, in south africa you find that they have 11 official languages and they even have like more languages that are not even like officially recognized but they are spoken languages in the country so it's it's you know it differs it depends with the place but like it's not like one language africans do not have one language although i have to um, to say that like when we when we communicate like usually like the common language that everybody can speak usually in zimbabwe and i've noticed this in south africa also is like english but when you go like um uh to countries like that are far north of africa like um, they speak like french okay so it depends on on the country that colonized you know that particular area so like if the people were colonized by britain they speak like english like you know like to communicate like all the different languages like everyone the common language that everyone can speak is english but if the country was colonized like by france the common language that everyone speaks is france there's also like swahili swahili is like um the african language that's like uh a lot of people speak like and i have heard that like in mm, they are advocating that it should be like the main language of africa i don't know you know how that is going to work out but yeah it's basically it's like that um okay uh, next question is the internet in africa <laughs> okay um yes we have internet in africa yeah we, we we do we do have internet in africa uh but it's not as cheap like uh wi-fi is not as cheap as it is i've noticed here in china it is really cheap to, to you know to get wi-fi but in africa it is a little bit more expensive most people do buy you know data bundles like they they have like these data bundles and um also what what are bundles because like in zimbabwe like the the app that like almost everyone uses is like whatsapp and the whatsapp bundle is like the cheapest bundle that you can find so like most people like they can go like for months without even like you know just using any other app or like without even like browsing on google or anything like that they will just be using you know the whatsapp bundle because like the whatsapp bundle can work only with whatsapp and no other app or anything like that so like um and then the data bundle like you can you can browse with it but then like it is it is it just finishes like that so <laughs> yeah we do have the internet but you know to get wi-fi is a little bit expensive for some uh okay so and uh, do wild animals roam around freely in africa uh yeah um, i'm going to have to say yes and no okay mostly no because like in in zimbabwe like we have like this this game parks right so like these are just like um parks like it's it's like this huge area that that is just um reserved only for animals and then people like tourists can come like in vans like it's fenced like it's it's fenced it's bordered so like they can come 
with fans and then they just like you know just drive around in the area and then just watching the animals do their thing you know just so it's like uh it's it's not an environment that i can say it's too controlled like a zoo but it's like this uh area that like you know animals will just be that will, that that is the area that is just reserved you know for wild animals only uh, and then when you go to other places like there is a place in Zimbabwe called Kariba and it's it's actually a tourist attraction because like it has like the largest man-made lake in the world it's it's it's, it's really beautiful uh, so in Kariba like usually elephants you can see elephants they walk in the streets like with people like people who have to make way for the elephant because sometimes like you can just be walking and then you just be seeing an, an elephant passing or a head of elephants passing and be like oh my god wow like when I saw that I was really surprised and like the locals they're not even faced by it they're not even surprised you know they can just like you know make way and act as if you know nothing is happening because they're used to it and me I was like oh my god like I was standing in in shock and i was even scared but you know like the people there they are not really scared and you see in kariba you see a lot of baboons you know like <laughs> they would tell us that like mm, uh we were on a school trip so they would tell us that you shouldn't uh, be leaving you know your food like when you're eating don't you know like you should just eat and then put your food away but don't put your food at a place that is open because the baboons will come and you know because they will be coming for the food so it it was just something that was really shocking for me but it's not everywhere in africa in in, in zimbabwe i mean it's not everywhere in zimbabwe that is like that it's, it's just some places you know where where like people and animals they coexist but it's it's cool it's actually kind of cool um okay next question what do african houses look like all right ah okay so this okay the traditional african house it is usually round like this round structure and then like it is thatched with with uh, wood and grass so um, but uh the modern african houses are just houses like any other houses like if we go it depends in with what place you are in africa at that time if you live in a city in an african city they have apartments <laughs> they live in apartments if you go like in a small town they live like in those like houses you know that i don't know how to call those houses you know they're not like maybe like they can be like two floors or just one floor i don't know i don't know what to call those houses and they live in oh, i guess they're just houses right yeah they live in just normal houses and then when you go to the village that is where you find like the, those thatched you know with grass houses so it depends on where you are in the country mm, okay so what do africans eat again depends on where you are the 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 diet of the people who are in the village is completely different from the diet uh, except for staple food our staple food is sadza which is in south africa it's called pop and i've seen that that is also like their staple too and and like um, most people know it as fufu <laughs> yeah that fufu that is our staple food in 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 zimbabwe so like fufu the way you just cook it basically you cook fufu and then you you add like gravy or um, fufu with a uh, roasted chicken fufu with uh, stew fufu with um, beef you, you can you can fufu with okra like you can you can just make a lot of dishes with fufu so like i think that is like something that we have in common as a whole country and then you know some western dishes are very popular too in like you know like uh some people eat spaghetti <laughs> some people eat rice it 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 just depends especially in the cities but then in the village like people usually eat like uh, a farm you know like a farm produce because like they are farmers they are farming so like you find things like maize things like ground nuts things like like they eat really healthy they eat really healthy in the village like there was a time uh, you know that i lived with my grandmom for a certain period of time i think it was like one year i was living in the village like it is of course like they don't spend a lot of money like i i don't think they even spend like the only money that we had to spend on food 
was when we, we went to the to to grind the milli meal right and everything else was just things on the farm and then yeah that was it and then we have to buy only cooking oil me yeah cooking oil and what else did we have to buy and salt cooking oil salt sugar that was it and flour yeah cooking oil salt sugar flour and everything else is on the farm the meat they had cows chickens that are running around everywhere and like you can just catch a chicken that's your dinner <laughs> uh, and then all right so next question do african kids go to school yes we go to school and actually um zimbabwean the zimbabwean school system is it's it's good it's good it's good <laughs> uh actually me i went to uh, most of my schooling i did it in a boarding school because you know my 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 parents were not in the country so like i had to go to a boarding school uh, but um, the school systems in africa like uh, schooling is very cheap okay so basically like they are government schools right and they are um, they are private schools and then they are like um, these uh, missionary schools these are usually boarding schools the missionary schools and uh, um, they are council schools like okay so the government schools and the council schools like basically these are the government schools they are really cheap like very very cheap like it is so cheap education is so cheap in Zimbabwe it's really cheap like um, I remember when I went to primary school it was like 10 US dollars per semester and we had three semesters like in the village like we had like three semesters right so it's like 10 US dollars every semester that's like 30 dollars per year and the, to, and the textbooks are free because like because of the they are donated like from other countries I think Western countries the textbooks are free and they even give us like uh, the the stationery is free sometimes especially when you go to school in the village I went to primary school in the village when I was living with my mom with my grandmom I mean uh, and at that time like everything was free everything was free except some some students even the tuition was paid for them you know by charity organizations so like it was just you know it, it was nice and even it doesn't matter whether you afford it or not you know like the, the stationery and the textbooks they are free for everybody so it was nice but then when you go to private schools it becomes a little bit more expensive uh, and also even government schools in, in, in the city can be a little bit, you know, more expensive than the village. And then there are boarding schools. Yeah, these are expensive. They, they are really expensive. And especially if the boarding school is a private boarding school, it can be very expensive. Uh, and in the schools, what is it like? Uh, okay, in Zimbabwe and in South Africa also. We wear uniforms we wear uniforms to school every school has its own different uniform obviously like uh uniforms and everybody is required to wear that uniform uh the girls especially primary school the girls are required to cut their hair girls and boys actually everybody like m most schools in Zimbabwe, in south africa i have noticed that like they they that that is not a thing like they're not required to cut their hair but in zimbabwe like you must cut your hair your hair must be very very short you cannot you shouldn't like be able to pinch it like this if you pinch it like this it's, it's already too long you should be like able to cut it like you shouldn't be able to comb it you should be able to brush it so like the hair it's, it's yeah that, that was a thing but then when you get to high school some schools they will start you know you know allowing girls to braid their hair so like in school like they can say that this style is the only style that is allowed i have seen like cornrows uh the school that i went to like uh my freshman year in high school uh the the juniors we put cornrows so like straight back cornrows and then the seniors they had like singles so like twist twisted singles and the prefects, some of them wore wig, weaves and wigs, especially the head girl, you know, like the head prefects, they wore wigs and weaves. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, 
it it differs with with every school some schools even in high school they will say like no board heads for everyone so it depends uh and also yeah basically the school system is just like I have noticed here in China it's, it's it's more or less the same. Ah also corporal punishment. Oh our teachers used to beat us. I I I I've never seen that here in China. Our teachers used to beat us up. Oh my god. Any mistake our teachers used to beat us up. You know like they use like those sticks for corporal punishment. It's allowed in Zimbabwe. It's, it's allowed but in, in South Africa it's not allowed. In Zimbabwe it's allowed teachers they they use corporal punishment to to discipline children and, and it, it is one of the reasons why i was very disciplined so, <laughs> um okay next question uh, uh okay what is the weather like in africa okay <sighs> the weather okay so we have four seasons right summer autumn winter spring and um our summers they are hot but they are not that hot like here in china i've noticed that their summers are extremely hot and their winters are extremely cold like it's snowing like in, in zimbabwe it doesn't snow it's just like it's, it is really cold yes it's cold like you cannot walk outside like wearing summer clothing you have to wear like you know like you have to layer like maybe two three leggings and then something on top so like it, it is really cold in winter in zimbabwe but it's not as cold as here and it's also really hot but not as hot as here so um we have like uh, yeah and then the autumn and the spring it's just like yeah and also in summer it rains yeah so like yeah it's it's not as extreme as like the weather in, in zimbabwe is not as extreme as other places in africa and like no places like the sahara it's a desert it's hot and it's always hot 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 so like and then there are places like uh you know the dr congo where they have like rainforests there and it's always raining it's not like that in in zimbabwe like the the weather is a little bit you know stable <laughs> okay next question is everyone poor in africa okay um i think this question like are there poor people in africa the answer is yes many places in africa they are poor people but it is uh very untrue that like everyone in africa is poor because they they are like just like everywhere else in the world they are there are classes like there there is the super rich like those billionaires the people who control like the natural resources and stuff like that and we have like the the rich you know the people who live life like yeah the millionaires and stuff like that and then we have like um, yeah you know the okay what did i just say never mind they are like class system right the rich the middle class and the poor so basically the the okay they are super rich people like super rich like billionaires african billionaires these are people who own mines people who basically people who control the natural resources because africa is like so rich in natural resources people who control mines gold mines diamond mines oils people who control those things like they are really rich like filthy rich and then we have like okay the rich you know the normal rich <laughs> and then we have the um, the middle class actually the uh, uh you know when people talk about africa like i've noticed on the internet or like in places outside africa people say ah you know like most people in africa are poor but actually that's not the case the majority of africans they fall uh, under um, the the middle class like especially in in Zimbabwe South Africa I don't know about like some places you know when we go up north I I I cannot I cannot talk about those places because I I know nothing about those places but in Zimbabwe like the majority of the people they fall in the middle class right the working class you know these are people who are like you know just people usually people in the cities working and then 
we have the poor i think it's just like everywhere else in the world except for the fact that you know like in africa poverty can be very extreme it can be really extreme especially for those people who don't have you know nothing so yeah that's that and then uh is there always conflict in africa okay so this also like the previous question there are places where there, there is conflict and there are places where there's just peace so like it's not every every there are certain countries in africa that yeah they are always fighting but then like in south africa zimbabwe like in the south like i've never really heard about it like it's just we're just living our normal lives just like everyone else we're just living our day-to-day life there's not nothing really going on it's just people you know struggling like like with our day-to-day you know day-to-day life problems so yeah well that's it for today's video i hope you find this video informative uh, and if you would like to hear more about my experiences growing up in zimbabwe just leave a comment in the comment section below and yeah see you next time